I'm sure you want to talk good things about your country because that's what you're paid to do. Every question you have asked so far, you have gone straight into the negative dimension. Is Bangladesh in the habit of giving pardons to convicted murderers? The, the certainty with which you are speaking in many ways is a surprising me. For years now, the government of Bangladesh has been criticized around the world for its human rights record. But its reputation received another jolt this month with the release of a new documentary alleging high-level bribery and corruption. My guest this week from Dhaka is Gauha Rizvi, foreign affairs advisor to the country's prime minister. When will the authorities stop denying the truth about the repression they've inflicted and clean up their act? Gauhar Rizvi, welcome to Conflict Zone. Thank you. Your country has become a byword for egregious human rights abuses, which your government routinely denies. As an academic who's used to dealing in truth, why do you serve a government that seems to have so little regard for that commodity? Uh, Mr. Sebastian, I think this question needs to be qualified a bit. Uh, when you say of egregious uh, human rights violations, might I uh, explain that human, human rights is a, a very large uh, word. Well, let it me be right more specific then. Let me yes. be more specific. Arbitrary detention, torture, enforced disappearances, extrajudicial executions, all of which your government is accused of by the UN, human rights groups throughout Asia, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, the Committee Against Torture. That's what I had in I, mind. Well, I, I wish I could accept uh, these uh, allegations in its entirety. I will not be denying that there have not been instances of uh, some, uh, disappear uh, some disappearances. Uh, when you talk about uh, torture, there is no documented evidence of uh, torture to the best of my uh, 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 knowledge. Uh, the UN Committee Against Torture is certain that it's carried out routinely. It's received report after report that it's carried out routinely by your security forces. And you would, you, know, you would have us believe that they've all got it wrong and where Bangladesh no, I, is concerned? I, I, would not, I would not deny it and I would not say that they have all got it wrong. But I do also want to say that as far as the government is concerned, torture is illegal and we try to make sure that torture doesn't take place. You know, why I was objecting to the way you uh, posed the question Mr. Sebastian, is because so many good things have happened in Bangladesh. Today, Bangladesh is one of the spectacular successes of development. Yes, and you're, you're very good at promoting um, the successes, the economic successes, for instance, right. of your country. And, but, and what we, I, what have, but that's not what I'm asking you about. That's not what I'm asking you about. I'm asking you about the things that have gone wrong in your country. Um, right. Your government, for instance, claims zero tolerance of corruption. Well, the boss of Transparency International in Bangladesh himself summed up the extent of corruption when he accused the government of going after only what he called the small fish. The activities of corrupt leaders at the top are beyond our imagination, he said. We don't see robust investigation or effective legal action against any of those big players. So, so much for the, the promise of zero tolerance for corruption. Okay. If you, if you recall, about six to nine months ago, there was a, a, a big uh, uh, action against various corrupt uh, individuals and organizations. Many of them have been arrested. Police investigation is taking place. Uh, the Anti-Corruption Commission is in inquiring into it. You know, at the end of the day, we have to follow a judicial uh, process. And this is a time-consuming uh, process. I am not saying our process is perfect. I am not saying that there isn't sometimes a political uh, uh, considerations also go into it. 
these things are true. But where I object, and Mr. Sebastian, you are such an experienced uh, uh, journalist, is that the way you paint the picture, it's all so one-sided that you, your viewers may end up getting the wrong impression. That well, it's not, it's not like me painting the picture. I'm relying on reports for internationally respected organizations like Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, case, the Committee Against no, Torture. In that, case, in that case, please allow me to uh, uh, balance that picture with the reality as it happens on the ground. Yes, which, which, uh, you, are, which, which you are doing. But, but all yes. this has paved the way for a high-profile documentary, which was released this month by the Al Jazeera Network, which alleged shocking levels of corruption among senior officials of your state. And your government's immediate reaction was to brand the film false, defamatory, and a smear. You didn't but, even bother to investigate oh, first. That's not the uh, response oh, of an honest no, government, is it? Uh, 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 inquiry is taking place. It, it is being inquired, but let me really, with all sincerity, ask you, the title of that a documentary was all the prime minister's men. And we were told that it would expose corruption around the prime minister. Do you really believe that documentary succeeded in doing that? Was there a single evidence which incriminated the prime minister in the alleged uh, 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 corruption? I mean, this, this is where I think a sensible academics and journalists, we should stand back and ask ourselves, what was the evidence uh, uh, given to incriminate the prime minister's involvement? And yet this whole documentary was built as to show how corrupt the regime is. Dr. Rizvi, yes. Dr. Rizvi yes. looking, yes. looking yes. at the film, which was produced by Al Jazeera, here was a television team that was able to locate two high-level fugitives from justice, convicted yes. of murder, whose elder brother yes. just happens to be your serving chief of the army, General Aziz Ahmed. Um, apparently, your own law enforcement couldn't find his uh, brothers who were on the run, but, but they did. That's pretty embarrassing for you, isn't it? Certainly it is. But on the other hand, again, I'm not going to be defending everything but the way you are putting the question to me, I, I feel almost it is necessary. Should a person be judged guilty because of the guilt of his brother? I think this is a question we need to ask. Now, if the brother has helped his, uh, if the, uh, the brother in uh, the armed force has helped his brother to evade justice, to uh, avoid uh, uh, or further his criminal activities, this accusation would be extremely, extremely uh, 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 valid. The, what happened was long, long before this gentleman uh, uh, became the uh, army army chief. All right. Well, let's and just to, let's just look at some of the details which came out in the mm, film about, about yeah. um, the general General Ahmed's brothers. Two of them, Anis and Harris, were found guilty of involvement in the 1996 murder of a member of a rival party, and both absconded from justice and went on the run. Now, a third brother, mm. Joseph, was also convicted and spent more than 10 years on death row. Magically, just before his brother Aziz was promoted to head of the army, Joseph gets a presidential pardon. How did that happen? Is Bangladesh in the habit of giving pardons to convicted murderers who gun down their opponents on the street in cold blood? Is that what you do? You give them a presidential uh, pardon? <laughs> Mr. Sebastian, the, the certainty with which you are speaking in many ways is uh, surprising me. And you have linked the appointment of uh, the army chief and his brother's release uh, uh, into one uh, story. Let me remind you. It is one story, uh, Dr. No, Mr. no, 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 Mr. Sebastian. Let me My give point you is you fact. have to be pretty but well I, connected to get a pardon I, for cold-blooded murder, me give you, don't Let you? me give you the facts, then you draw your conclusion. Please, let me give you the facts. The, uh, the brother in question had served about 20 years in prison. There is a, 
a law in the country that after serving a certain amount of years, you may be given parole or clemency uh, by the president. So all this happened long before, months and months before. Even the, uh, the vacancy to which the brother was appointed as a chief arose. It happened completely separately. This man has served 35 years plus in the armed forces, worked his way up uh, with a fairly clean record. So why should we malign and link, uh, link these two stories together? I would like you to look at the time, I would like you to look at the uh, timeline of the two events. These are six months apart. All right. Oh, okay. Dr. Rizvi, the, the point is also, which the film brought out, is that your army chief knew perfectly well where his two other brothers were, the ones that were on the run and apparently didn't tell the relevant authorities. Isn't that worth investigating? It would be worth investigating, but please also, you know, as much as I do, both these gentlemen were outside the jurisdiction of Bangladesh. And yes, if this information had been available, we would have tried to have uh, extradited, extradited them, and uh, provided we had an extradition treaty with these two countries. In fact, in many cases, we have done, and there is no reason to believe that we would not have done, and you are quite right uh, that if this information had been available to the government, the government would have taken uh, action. Well, so perhaps would... this is all just too close to the higher echelons of power, too dangerous to delve into. Isn't the fact that nobody in your country wants to delve too deeply into suspicions of high-level corruption, do they? Too many people disappear and end up dead if they say the no. wrong thing and ask the wrong questions, don't they? It's a fact of life I in your country. No, 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 uh, Mr. Sebastian. Uh, we, we are proud, however imperfect, we are proud of our liberal democratic system. We are proud that we have a prime minister who uh, has a uh, 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 very low uh, intolerance of, of corruption. Our armed forces are firmly under civil control. And, and therefore, to say that uh, corruption uh, is connected at the high level, well, how is, it, how is it, how is it then that in a state which is supposed to have a functioning justice system, that these two fugitive brothers of your army chief, Anis and Harris, convicted murderers, actually are reported to have returned to Dhaka in broad daylight in 2019 to celebrate a family wedding? There aren't many fugitive killers who can show up at a big society wedding, mingle with the president oh, and foreign okay. dignitaries, Let, unless they have protection right at the top. You know that as well as uh, I do. I, we, we are both, you are absolutely right. If it was known to anyone that these gentlemen have uh, returned to Bangladesh, uh, immediately they, they would have been apprehended. There is no uh, 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 question about it. But they were pictured at the wedding, Dr. Rizvi. They were let pictured. Us, let, 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 let us. At an army I, military I, club. Two convicted uh, murderers, us, uncles of the bridegroom, no. happily celebrating with everyone else. We are telescoping something that happened over 25 years into a single incident. The, the brothers had committed crime in 1996, uh, long before General Aziz had even joined the army as a cadet. We now uh, uh, go forward 25 years uh, uh, later, and we are saying that these two men came back to Bangladesh. And if they did, and as, as the photograph suggests, they entered, this was absolutely a great failure of our uh, uh, justice administration and the uh, 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 immigration uh, police in the airports, there is no question about that. But you will also have to understand this, that these people 
had acquired different passports, which unless it was known to the government, unless that was on the watch list, it is quite easy for uh, them to have slipped in along with thousands of other people who come in and go out. I am Dr. not Rizvi. for one moment suggesting that this has not been a failing of the government. It All has right. been Do a failing Dr. of Rizvi. the government. Do Dr. Rizvi, in a democracy with the kind of free press that you've claimed exists in Bangladesh, all these allegations from Al Jazeera would be plastered over the newspapers and the broadcast media, but they aren't, are they? Something that the Dhaka Tribune sought to explain when it wrote to its readers, the reason for our silence, it said, is simple. The current state of media and defamation law makes it unwise for any Bangladeshi media house to venture into any kind of meaningful comment on the controversy. That's it, isn't it? You have cowed the media into submission and muzzled it, so it's become afraid of its own shadow. Are you proud of that? If, if it were uh, uh, true, as you say, I would be ashamed of it. But let me tell you what the truth is. Yes. Are you saying the paper the is lying? Are you saying the newspaper is lying? Let, let me not uh, answer in yes and no. Let me give you the uh, uh, explanation. Indeed, there is a thing called Digital Security Act. It is to prevent uh, violence, rumors, and uh, inciting of people through the uh, di digital platform. This law, unfortunately, uh, which our government inherited, was the ICT Act was passed in 1996. Our government revised it, and it is now called the Digi Digi Digital Security Act. But sadly, we have now learned that some of the wordings are very loose and vague, which leaves it open to its abuse. But to jump from there to say that the press has been muzzled, to say that uh, there is no freedom of press in Bangladesh, let me just tell you, there well, are well, over, Dr. Rizvi, you, over, you, you, over 60, 60 daily newspapers being published from Dhaka alone. Dr. Rizvi, Amnesty International, private Amnesty television Inter companies. I, I understand, but Amnesty International said that in the first nine months of last year, more than 800 cases were filed under this act with the loose language that you talk about, with many of the most prominent editors and senior journalists increasingly targeted. 800 cases in this, with using this law, which your government apparently inherited. Your government doesn't seem to have any reservations about using this law, does it? Uh, Isn't it time uh, to admit uh, your law you, is nothing have, but a weapon uh, no. to silence critics and suppress dissent? That's the truth of it, isn't I, it? No, I would accept your criticism and I would have accepted your allegations had you asked the Human Rights Watch of the 800 or so uh, and I'm taking your figure as you, as you gave it to me who were arrested how many of them were journalists you know you, you have used a broad figure of 800 how we faced a serious uh, terrorism uh, attacks in this country we had to fight it, fight hard against terrorism. How many of those 800 were actually terrorists? How many of those 800 were uh, criminals who incited violent uh, uh, activities? Without differentiating, you have given me the figure of 800. Please, I challenge you to look at that figure and tell me how many were actual journalists. And well, I can, reason, I, can break, I can break down some of those figures for you because human rights groups are pretty much united in their condemnation of your government's crackdown on free speech, especially during the current pandemic. Human Rights Watch said you've arrested journalists, artists, students, doctors, political opposition members and activists who spoke out against the government's response to the pandemic or otherwise 
criticised the ruling party. Last oh. June, you even oh. arrested a 15-year-old boy for allegedly defaming the Prime Minister on Facebook. The child okay. was sentenced to time in a All right. juvenile detention centre. Right. Thanks. Now, let me now uh, 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 answer this question uh, as, as, as clearly as I possibly can. You have been telling, you are telling your viewers that during this period of pandemic, the government did all sorts of horrible things. Have you told your uh, audience that Bangladesh is one of the few countries in the world compared to your own country in the UK, to the United States or anywhere else in, uh, in the world where we have tackled pandemic really well with our li limited resources. We have one of the lowest death rate in the world. We have the highest rate of recovery. We have expanded our hospitals to provide treatment. None of these facts were mentioned. You have uh, uh, picked up 15 examples or so. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you want to change the subject, Dr. Rizvi, no, no, no. and I'm sure you want to talk good things about your country because that's what you're paid to do. That's why you're no. a government, that's why no, you're a government no, no, no. advisor. But, no, no. but, but are, why, yeah, why, why, I, why, I'm asking, do you turn a blind eye to what the UN Committee Against Torture has been calling the widespread and routine commission of torture and ill treatment? You passed an act in 2013 supposedly outlawing torture. But six years later, Indeed. only 17 Indeed. cases had been filed against security personnel, and not a single one had been completed by six years later. Not one in six years had been right. completed. Is that a proud achievement for no, a government it is, it is, that allegedly no. is cracking down on torture? It isn't, is it? It's a disgrace. Uh, uh, well, let me again say you, you are right in the sense when you say that in, in seven years, uh, X number of uh, uh, cases of torture have been filed, and none of them yet has come to a final judgment. If I, I take your statement to be true, and I will agree that this is not a very good, very, very good uh, 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 record. But the truth of the matter is, we did pass a law. The truth of the matter is, we are trying to deal, uh, deal with it, and where I am constantly uh, objecting, uh, not because you think I am doing this because I, I, I uh, and as you said, uh, I am paid uh, 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 to do this. I might turn the same thing to you and say, is it not right that you are, you are being paid simply to make these attacks without putting it into broad, wide context? Every question you have asked so far, you have gone straight into the negative dimension. Even on pandemic, you said very clearly that all these horrible things have happened. Please tell me another country in the whole wide world which has dealt with pandemic as effectively as our government has done. Mr. Dr. Rizvi, it's a very good tactic to change the subject, but I don't want to leave it because you said that your government is taking action um, against... Uh, the human rights abuses. Uh, is it going to take action against members of this so-called rapid action battalion that you have? Because the, the um, UN says its members have been credibly alleged to have committed torture, arbitrary arrests, unacknowledged detention, disappearances and extrajudicial killings of people in their custody. You tell me about the good things your country has done, but are you not embarrassed with the actions that this rapid action battalion has been carrying out in the name of your government? Your government is killing let me people. Say again, it's killing its people. And, and, let me say with all honesty and, uh, and humility and embarrassment that the sum of the cases that you have just uh, uh, stated are true. There have been instances of that which nobody in the government uh, in his or her right mind, defend. But the, and well, also who's in what charge? you did not who's say. Who's in charge? Uh, well, it's well, a question well, whether they defend moment, them or not. Mr. Who's Sebastian, in charge? No, well, Mr. 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 Sebastian, let me finish. You have asked me a question. Let me finish answering. What you did not say in your uh, uh, question 
is how many of those uh, 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 rapid battalion police force have been removed from services, how many of them are under investigation, and how many of them have been charged. This was not mentioned by you. This is the role of the government, that when it finds out that something has some egregious violation of human rights or law has taken place, they must get to the bottom. I don't say we are always successful, but I do resent not being given the credit for the efforts that we are making. All right. Dr. Gao Rizvi, been good to have you on Conflict Zone. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Mr. Sebastian. It has been such a pleasure and an experience to speak to you. <laughs>